And I just want to start this and then we'll finish it at another time. You got Exodus. Get Exodus chapter 20. And I'm going to start this. I want you to say this with me to the devil. Devil, I didn't start this fight, but I'm going to finish it. Give God some praise. <laughs> you know, you know this. Ah, oh my God, they going in right there, ain't they going? This, this, there's some fights you didn't been in where you didn't started the fight, and uh, it's on, you know. But then there's other fights. Come on, go back with me a little while. You ain't you ain't started. You really had nothing to do with it, and they brought that mess to you. It seemed like look like to me you fight harder, just cause you matter. I know that's not a word, but that we're gonna use it today. You matter. You done bought that mess to me. I ain't had nothing to do with it, and I'm mad because I didn't have nothing to do with it. You gonna put that mess in my face? I'm gonna fight harder. Enter the realm of the devil and you. See, you may not have started this thing, but you need to finish this thing. Hallelujah. In fact, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, say this with me. Say, it's not your fault, but it is your fight. And that's my sermon right there. We're going to start it and we're going to finish it. And uh, I want to talk to you for a few moments and we're going to deal with this and we're going to be on a series of this. I don't know when we're going to finish it, how we're going to finish it, and where we're going to finish, but we're going to finish it. Amen called generational curses chapter 20 verse verse 1 and uh, let's look at this real quick go to verse 5 for this for the sake of time you haven't say amen Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, talking about idols, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the inequity, somebody say inequity, of the fathers upon the children. Here's what's powerful right here. Unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. That means that this curse has a ripple effect that will reach and reach out from you and touch four generations from you. And what I came by here to tell you today is a lot of what you're dealing with is something called the ripple effect. And you didn't have a lot to do with what's on your plate right now. And much of what generational curse is about is found right here. But I want to back up and share something with you, and uh, we, we, we'll, we'll get on to some other things. But it, I think it bears witness to share these things in a practical way so you can understand something. Years ago, um, I used to be a drug dealer. Years and 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 years ago. Many years ago. Uh, and I sold cocaine like it was going out of style from one end of the state to the other end of the state. I was proud drug dealer. Stuff, had my chest poked out. Say your kilo, say your ounce, say your eight ball, whatever you want. I'll sell it to you. And in 88, I got busted. Charged me with 10 kilos of cocaine. Trafficking, delivery, conspiracy, and some other mess. And I, there's a lot right there, ain't it? Uh -huh. Somebody said, thank Jesus. I'm saved and delivered now. I was telling somebody that story the other day. They was like, what, you? And I was like, you know what? That's just a testimony to the power of God that no one can visualize me that way. Some of y'all can. Y'all need to get your head back in church. Say, I, yeah, I can see him selling some. No, I don't. Uh, come on. You're looking at the old man. Come on back with us. And so uh, I got busted, <clears throat> and I was in a federal holding cell, Tim. 
And uh, they played good cop, bad cop. Two FBI agents been uh, surveillance in me and my crew for about a year. They had, man, they had so much footage, Joe, until, I mean, this footage could probably fill this room up. And they was really trying to put me away for life. I ain't gonna tell you the story, whole story, but sometime if you got time, I might show it, share it with you. They tried to put me away for life. I honestly tell you the truth, but they couldn't do it. Somebody say, but God. God, God said, you know what, he's a mess right now, but someday he's gonna get his stuff together. I'm not going to let you lock him away for the rest of his life. They was trying real hard, Drew. I wasn't real nice on them streets. So when I was sitting there in the holding cell, the FBI agents playing good cop, bad cop, it didn't work on me. You know, they both was pigs to me. And the good cop got mad. <laughs> I literally watched him go from the good cop to the bad cop. It was so funny. He got so frustrated. <laughs> it didn't work. And he said something to me that later on changed my life. He said, you know something? He had his nose snared up. He said, we've been waiting on you. I said, whatever. He said, I know your daddy. And he's going to the same prison. He went to the same prison you're going to. And we, we knew your number. And we knew you. He said, we've been waiting on you. I knew, knew what school I went to, what element. I mean, these FBI agents do some thorough checks, guys. And he said, we knew you'd be here. And we've been waiting on you. And he said, you trash, we're going to slam the door shut on you. I know your daddy told me my daddy's name. He told, me, he told me what my daddy was charged with. I was charged with the same thing. He told me what prison my dad went to. He said he knew my dad. And he said, you're going to go to the same prison your dad went to. And God took that opportunity to talk to me later on down, years later, about generational curses. How is it that I have exactly, almost tailored the same results that my dad had? And how is it that these human beings can get so predicated and so predictable that they can make a bold, brazen statement by saying, I knew you'd be here, we've been waiting on you. How is it you can know a girl that lives in the projects, her mama had a house in the projects, she got a house in the projects, her grandmama got a house in the projects, and her great-grandma had a house in the projects, and the great-great-great-grandma was in the projects when it was first built. And they all on the same road. You think that's coincidental? You, your dad slapped your mom around. See, we're going to go some places that are going to be painful for some folk. But we're going to go there because you're going to get delivered. Your dad slapped your mom around, slapped all the sense out of her. And I say sense because she never left. So she didn't have good sense. And you swore up and down you ain't going to never touch a woman. And you slapping your girlfriend right now. You slapping her senseless. And she, just like your mama, staying with your crazy butt. And there's this repeat, there's this repetition that happens that I will visit the inequity of thy fathers. Now listen to what's said there. Not on the fathers, but on their children. And then their children's children. So I'm going to take, or I'm going to allow, what their fathers did to affect them. And they're going to stand here, and it's not going to be their fault, but because of unrepentant sin, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Somebody's got to pay the bill. And when the Lord said this to me, son, sin has to have payment. And somebody's got to pay the price. I chimed in right away. I said, Lord, you've already paid the price. What do you mean? You already paid the ultimate price. He said, unrepented sin. 